did you know that one bacterium can reproduce 72 times a day? One bacterium can produce thousands of bacteria by the end of a day or two. Now see, one bacteria divides to form two, two divides to form four, and this process continues. Now, this does not require the presence of two sexes. This form of reproduction requires only one sex and so is known as asexual reproduction, where a means without and sexual means the fusion of the male and the female gamete. Now, this kind of reproduction is also seen in a unicellular organism known as amoeba. So this is one amoeba that consists of only one cell. Now how do these amoeba reproduce? Well, see the nucleus starts dividing first and each divided nucleus surrounds itself with a portion of cytoplasm. And finally, two daughter amoeba are formed from one single amoeba. This method of asexual reproduction is known as binary fission. Binary means two and fission means breakdown. So one cell divides to form two cells. Now this form of breaking down of one cell to form new cells is also present in another organism known as plasmodium. Plasmodium is also a unicellular organism just like amoeba. Now what happens is under unfavorable conditions, plasmodium secretes a three-layered ball around itself. And this stage is known as the cyst stage. The function of the cyst is to protect the plasmodium against unfavorable conditions. Now what happens in this cyst stage is that the nucleus keeps on dividing and the nucleus surrounds itself with a portion of cytoplasm to form a lot of daughter plasmodiums. See, these are individual daughter plasmodiums. So there are one, two, three, four, like this, multiple number of daughter cells that are formed. So these cysts, on return of favorable climate, absorbs water and bursts open to release these daughter plasmodiums in the environment. These daughter plasmodiums grow up to form the adult plasmodium. Now, this form of reproduction is known as multiple fission. Multiple means many and fission means breakdown. So one plasmodium breaks down to form a number of plasmodiums. Now, just like the plasmodium had secreted a cyst around itself during unfavorable conditions, similarly, fungus such as rhizopus, which is a kind of a bread mold, also develops spore-like structures, these beaded structures that you can see, during unfavorable conditions. These spores that you can see are enclosed in this sac-like structure which is known as the sporangium. On return of favorable conditions, these sporangiums burst open to release the spores into the atmosphere. See, this is a real-life image of a bread mold. These sac-like structures that you can see, they are the sporangiums that contains the spores. Now, look at this living organism. 
This organism is known as Spirogyra. Now this is one individual Spirogyra, which is living. Now if for any reason it gets bisected into two parts, then the organism does not die. But these two new separated parts keep on growing individually because they have a part of the nucleus. So this form of asexual reproduction is known as regeneration or fragmentation. That is, one organism fragments to form two new daughter organisms. Now look at this living organism. This is known as hydra and it uh, lives under the oceans. See? This is how a hydra looks like. It has a cylindrical body and these hair-like structures which are known as tentacles near their mouth which helps in feeding and digestion. Now, these structures are not generally present in the hydra. So what are these structures? Well, these outgrowths uh, that come out of the hydra are known as buds. These buds separate from their parent body and form a new hydra. So this kind of asexual reproduction that occurs from a bud is known as budding. And budding takes place in hydra. Now, for so long, we have been discussing asexual reproduction. Reproduction that does not require the presence of both the sexes. But in case of human beings, we require a male and a female to come together to give birth to a new life. This form of reproduction that is caused by the fusion of the male and the female gamete is known as sexual reproduction. Now, not only human beings, sexual reproduction is also seen in other organisms such as the frogs, earthworms, and fishes. Now, let us see the case of sexual reproduction in the case of frogs. Well, this is a female frog and this is a male frog. So from this picture, you can easily say that this is a sexual reproduction. But the fertilization, that is the union of the male and the female gamete, does not take place within the female's body. It takes place externally. What happens is, a male frog mounts on a female frog and it uh, stimulates her to release eggs in the uh, nature. After that, what it does is this male frog releases sperms over this released egg and that is how fertilization takes place externally. This fertilized egg hatches to form newborn frog. External res uh, reproduction is not only seen in the case of frogs, but it is also seen in the case of fishes. See, eggs and sperms are shed into the surrounding water, and that is where fertilization or the union of male and the female gametes take place, and a new fish or a fish fry is formed. See, this is a real-life image of a fertilized egg. This fertilized egg will burst open to release the fish fry. Now, did you know that earthworm is a hermaphrodite? What do you mean by a hermaphrodite? Well, both the female and the male reproductive parts are present in the same worm. Yes, it is true. 
see male reproductive organs such as seminal vesicles, spermatheci, testes, and vast difference are present along with female reproductive parts such as ovary and oviduct. All these parts are present in a single worm. Now for reproduction to take place, two worms are required. They align themselves in such a way that 9 to 11 segment of one worm, that is this, 9 to 11th segment becomes opposed to the nitellum of the other worm. Yes, this protruded part that you can see is known as the nitellum. Now what happens is in this position when the worms move back and forth, the female genital apertures that is present over here releases egg into the nitellum and the spermatheci releases sperms into these uh, female eggs or the female reproductive cells and that is how a new worm is formed. Now this kind of sexual reproduction is known as copulation. So you've seen that all living organisms reproduce either sexually, that is the presence of both the partners, and asexually, that does not require the presence of both the sexes. 